Hi guys, in this video we're going to discuss how nationalist leader Viktor Orban has used the corona crisis to seize power in Hungary and how this was a long time in the making. The Hungarian parliament has just voted to grant Prime Minister Viktor Orban the right to rule by decree indefinitely in order to deal with the corona crisis. In other words, Viktor Orban can now pass any law without the approval of parliament forever and he can suspend elections. In this video we'll explain how this happened and how Viktor Orban transformed Hungary from a young post-communist liberal democracy to a right-wing authoritarian state. To give you perspective, I've invited my Hungarian friend from Tabu Mentes TV to give his perspective. My biggest point is that our conception of dictatorship is outdated. Therefore, the danger is bigger than how we might perceive it. This is Ben from Tabumentas TV Budapest. Welcome. Many call for wartime attitudes as the virus forces governments around the globe to make trade-offs between civil liberties and flattening the curve. But how much freedom are we willing to sacrifice? Strongmen like Netanyahu or Orban do not hesitate to exploit the state of emergency in order to continue their hunt for people's freedom or what's left of it. Given the state of emergency and his two-thirds supermajority in parliament, Viktor Orban has just managed to pass a law empowering him to rule by decree indefinitely. There is a lesson for everyone to remember. The oppressive regimes of the 21st century do not look like the dictatorships of the 20th. Anyone trying to compare postmodern oppressive systems to Nazi Germany or the Soviet Union is mistaken. In the postmodern age, there is no need for physical violence to suppress people and deprive them of their freedom. It is sufficient to control the information available to them. Therefore, most of us operate with an outdated conception of dictatorship. Viktor Orban did not take full control of Hungary today. By dismantling constitutional checks and balances, by severely limiting the information available to citizens, he took full control during the constitutional process of 2011 and 13. Today, Hungarians live in a competitive authoritarian system between democracy and autocracy. It is competitive because elections exist formally. On the other hand, it is authoritarian because electoral competition is manipulated, parties are not equal, and the rules are rigged. To sum up, Orban will probably resign of his special powers as the virus emergency fades. He did not take full control of Hungary today. He did so already many years ago by controlling the information available to citizens. People of the West, keep a close watch on your leaders because in the age of mass manipulation, deprivation of your freedom might come without the majority even being aware of it. So now that you've heard the Hungarian perspective, how did Hungary even get to this point? Although Viktor Orban and his Fidesz party are known today as a right-wing, populist, nationalist, anti-immigration party, it wasn't always that way. Fidesz began as a center-right liberal party founded when the communist dictatorship in Hungary came to an end. But although the end of communism brought about democracy and freedom of speech, it did not bring an end to the presence of communist-era functionaries in government. You see, the Communist Party had rebranded itself as a center-left social democratic party called the Hungarian Socialist Party. And throughout the 1990s, other center-right and liberal parties continued to work with the former communists in government. This created a lot of dissatisfaction, particularly on the right wing of Hungarian society. Many voters saw this as a betrayal, and there was a desire to purify the country of its dark, communist past. 
Viktor Orban spotted this opportunity and moved the Fidesz party to the right. And he was elected in 1998 and served as prime minister for one term. But it was in the 2000s that his real march to power began. You see, in the 2000s, the socialists were back in power, and they were rocked by a series of political scandals. First, in 2002, leaked documents revealed that Prime Minister Peter Medgeshi had been a secret agent in the Hungarian version of the KGB, which had tortured political prisoners in the communist era, and he was forced to resign. Second, was the infamous Özerd speech. In a secret speech in 2006, Hungarian Prime Minister Ferenc Gyurcsai openly admitted in vulgar language that he and his party had lied to the Hungarian people for two years in order to win elections. This speech was leaked and aired on the radio and mass protests and police brutality ensued. Third was the economy. You see, although the Hungarian Socialist Party presented itself as a left-wing party, it implemented harsh austerity policies and privatization, which were made even worse when the 2008 crisis hit. People were disgusted by the corruption, lies, and economic mismanagement of the socialists. And out of this crisis came a hero. Viktor Orban promised a radical new vision. No longer would Hungary be a slave to its communist past. The government had to be purified of all communist influence, and Hungarian traditional values, which had been eroded by communism, had to be restored. And this would require radical governmental and constitutional reforms. And so in 2010, he won an overwhelming two-thirds majority, enough to change the constitution, and what's more, Support for all the other parties, especially the socialists, collapsed. And there was now no significant opposition party that could stand in Orban's way. And so Orban used his two-thirds majority to change the constitution to solidify his power. The new constitution included media laws which make it illegal to run political ads on private media. Well, at the same time, the state-owned media is controlled by Fidesz party loyalists. New electoral laws make it so that most seats in parliament are elected on a first-past-the-post basis. With a divided opposition, this guarantees that Orban's Fidesz party will always win, even if they only get 30 or 40 percent of the vote in a given constituency. It also helps that Fidesz has been creating fake parties to further split the vote in some seats. Additionally, the new constitution weakens the independence of the courts and places limitations on free speech whenever it damages the dignity of the Hungarian nation, whatever that means. Actually, it's genius, because even if Fidesz is ousted from power, no other party can get the two-thirds majority necessary to change the constitution back to what it was. With these measures, Viktor Orban had consolidated his power. But although Orban did not face any challenges from the left, he did face a challenge from the right. Far-right, anti-Semitic, anti-Gypsy party, Jobbik, gained 20% of the vote in 2014. So in order to stop losing votes to the far right, Viktor Orban moved the Fidesz party further right in a nationalist direction. He granted citizenship to ethnic Hungarians in Romania and Slovakia. He enshrined Hungary's Christian heritage in the constitution. And when the refugee crisis hit, he adopted an increasingly anti-immigrant stance, refusing the EU's requests to take in refugees. And these were all policies copied from Jobbik. But while the Western media focuses on Viktor Orban's anti-immigration stance, they forget how he is mismanaging the country. You see, Hungary is part of the European Union, and the EU gives structural funds to poorer members of the EU to invest in infrastructure. But while the media is focused on how politically incorrect Orban is, 
He has been using EU money to enrich his friends and create a loyal class of billionaire oligarchs. He has done this by handing out contracts for public infrastructure projects to his friends at inflated prices. In exchange, they buy up media outlets and give support to the Fidesz party. For example, when there was a project to build a bridge on the border between Hungary and Slovakia, rather than giving the contract to the cheaper Slovakian company, Orban gave it to his millionaire friend, Lurinc Mezarosh. Conveniently, Mezarosh also owns a vast media empire and bought up the newspaper Nipsabochag, which was critical of Orban. And Orban used EU money to build a stadium for 3,800 people in his home village, which has only 1,700 people. This is corruption, plain and simple. And the consequences of this corruption have real effects on Hungarian society. Despite a growing economy, 44% of Hungarians cannot afford basic resources. And the healthcare system is falling apart. But Orban can keep winning elections because these problems are not his fault. It's George Soros, immigrants and the EU, anybody but Orban. And with a weak opposition, Orban's brand of nationalist populism and Christian traditionalism will continue to win him votes. That and his control over the media and biased electoral laws. The ironic thing is that for all of Orban's fear-mongering around immigrants, no one actually wants to immigrate to Hungary. Orban's policies have ruined the country and people are leaving Hungary en masse. 600,000 Hungarians have left the country since Orban took power, and that in a nation of 10 million people. And most of them are young, highly skilled, and highly educated. Now you might be asking, are such corrupt and authoritarian policies even allowed in the European Union? Well, they're not. And this has brought Viktor Orban into conflict with the EU. But until recently, they haven't done much to stop him. Finally, in 2018, they voted to suspend Hungary's voting rights in the EU, but they haven't hit him where it hurts. Hungary is one of the largest receivers of EU money. Withdraw that money and Fidesz collapses. But the EU hasn't taken such tough measures yet. It will also be tough for them to kick Hungary out of the EU, because Poland, which is also run by right-wing authoritarian populists, would veto that. There is a lesson here for people in the West. Although Orban is taking Hungary in an increasingly authoritarian direction, don't forget that he was elected with a democratic mandate. When the left and the center are dominated by out-of-touch, corrupt politicians, a right-wing populist looks real good. And Orban was able to speak to issues that were being ignored by the other parties. And what the situation in Hungary also teaches us is that we cannot allow an emergency like coronavirus to be used as a pretext to take away our freedoms. After all, it was Benjamin Franklin who said that those who give up essential liberty to obtain a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. If you like what you see, feel free to donate to us on Patreon. Thank you to those who got us past the 200 subscriber mark. Like, share and subscribe. Because this was my take.